What's up, Covalence friends? I know you've seen, heard, or even played around with ChatGPT at least once. And so today, we're going to integrate it into our own Node.js app and have a little conversation with it. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're doing is we're actually starting off at platform.openai.com. And it's gonna ask you to create an account or log in. I just used my Google account. And once we actually have the account created, we can actually go into view API keys and I've actually already created a secret key here. And so you'll just click this button, create a new secret key, and then you'll copy it. And once you create it, you need to copy it, save that somewhere. And we're going to use that in a second. So make sure you actually copy it. And then if you need to, you can create a new one. So it's not a big deal, but um, we're going to go ahead and use this in our project in a second. And then if you have to, you might actually have to add a payment method in here, but I think you get for like $5 for free. Um, and so $5 goes a long way. Um, and you can actually set your usage limits, the usage limits as well. So I have an approved usage limit of like $120 here, but, um, I set a hard limit to $10. I don't want to spend more than $10 a month. So it's kind of cool that you can set hard and soft limits. Um, but again, not really necessary. I would just use the $5 that they give you. And I think it's going to last you probably a pretty long time unless you go crazy. Uh, but again, um, the thing you're going to need is this API key. So make sure you grab that, you copy it, and then we're going to go ahead and paste that in a second. So I'm going to have to create a new one here. I'm going to go ahead and create this new one, copy it. And don't worry, I'm going to revoke these. So you're not going to get to use them. I'm going to delete the old one and um, I'm going to delete this one as well. So don't, pause the screen and copy that key. It's not going to exist. So it's not a big deal. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and pull up our project here. So we have our chat GPT project. Now this is just a clone of our express template, which I provided in the description below. So go ahead and clone that repo. If you want to use this, it's just a very basic express based server. Um, nothing fancy. There's a couple API routes, but we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to uh, create some new API routes as well to kind of like complement these. So let's go ahead and first we're going to jump into our router section here. And you can see that we kind of have this whole um, API route set up here. So we actually already have body parser in here. We're parsing JSON. And then we have this API router. Now the API router comes in and we have this slash V1. So when we actually make our call, we're going to making our call to slash API slash V1 and then whatever we actually want to use. So we have a users here. We could use this, but I'm going to go ahead and just create a new one. We'll leave that one untouched. So we're going to create a new file. We're going to call it AI.ts and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to copy what's in our user.ts file right here, which is just realistically our, our function being set up with our new express router. And we can go ahead. We're going to rename users uh, just to AI. And we're going to delete this get since we're not going to need that. Instead, we are just going to have a single post route to the root route. And we're going to go ahead and delete this as well. And we're going to grab our const body equals request.body. And we're going to check if not body.prompt. Then we're actually going to return next with an object, which is going to treat as an error. And we can just say status. We'll say 500 for now. Actually, we'll say 400 since it really is a bad request error. Um, and then we'll say message, um, you know, prompt needed to continue. Uh, all right. And then if we do have a prompt, what we're actually going to do is we're going to call our open AI API. So, what we can do is let's go ahead and we're going to open up a terminal here and we're going to actually npm i open ai and we're going to save that so it's open ai all one word it's a pretty nice library they're pretty good at updating it and it actually includes typescript so just to kind of confirm that we actually have it in here open ai we're on version 3.2.1 currently so let's go back to our ai.ts file and we are going to import OpenAI. So we're going to import and in here, first let's grab OpenAI so we can actually get some typings. And we're going to import something called configuration and we're going to import our OpenAI API. All right, and so what the configuration is, is basically an input into our 
constructor for our open API API. So open AI API. That's a tough one to say. All right. So let's do open AI const open AI equals new open AI API. And in here is actually where we create our new configuration. And, and this is where we pass in our API key. So whoops, I copied something. So this is where I screwed up before. We actually need that API key. So if you, if you broke it before, just come in here, or if you didn't copy it, come in here and create a new one, you know, delete your old one. So we have our new key, and then you're gonna go ahead and copy that again. Don't bother, actually, you know what, if you want, go ahead and bother copying every single one of these letters. Um, it's not gonna do you any good, since this API key is not going to exist by the time you see this. All right, so we have our OpenAI instance now. And we can use that to actually make calls. So the calls, there's kind of a wide range of calls. If you go to their website and you look at the documentation in here, um, you'll see that they have different guides for text completion and code completion and everything along those lines. So there is an API reference for um, models and completions, things like that. So here's basically the completions API, which is what we're gonna play around with today. And basically we're gonna use our Node.js library um, and we're gonna also use text DaVinci 003, which is the model that we're gonna use. Um, if you wanna look at other models up here in the getting started area, it has other models, but I'll be honest, I haven't had much luck with the GPT Turbo. Um, and also I played around with Code DaVinci. Code DaVinci doesn't seem to work very well, in my opinion, either. It works well for like very basic things, like write a function that takes in two numbers and returns the sum. Um, it does that pretty well, but if you want to do anything complex, uh, it doesn't, in, at least in my experience, I haven't gotten it to work very well. But again, I highly encourage you to play around with it and try and make something super badass on your own. Um, but again, let's go ahead and continue with using text DaVinci 003. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this model. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a little, oh, well, we need to make this an async function. And we're going to create a little try catch block here. And inside this try catch block is where we're actually going to make our call. So we can say const completion equals await, and it's gonna be open AI. Well, I don't know what just happened, but we're going to renew, uh, go back a little bit. But open AI.create completion. And what we're gonna pass into here is the model which we just copied, which was text DaVinci 003. Our prompt is going to be body.prompt. Our temperature is basically in order of randomness. Um, so there's two types of uh, kind of random factors that you could put in here. You can put temperature or there's actually something called, I just wanna confirm top P. So top underscore P. Um, this is actually nucleus sampling versus temperature, which is just basically in order of randomness. Um, they recommend altering one or the other, not, not doing both. Uh, they also have a parameter called N, which basically generates how many actual results that you get back. Now, by default, it's one. We're going to leave it at one. Um, and then finally, the other important factor is this max token. So the way that OpenAI or ChatGPT works is it's based off tokens, and that's kind of what you pay for. You pay for total tokens. Um, and I believe if I, hmm, I wonder if, how I can find the actual uh, pricing. Let's go to just openai.com and see if we can find some pricing. Product pricing, all right. All right, so if we go down to the one we're using, which is DaVinci, um, it's about three cents for every 1,000 tokens. Wait, this is fine tuning models. Let's see, it might be two cents for every 1,000 tokens. Instruct GPT. Well, I'm not exactly sure which one it is. It's something around two cents to three cents per every 1,000 tokens. Uh, so again, I wouldn't worry too much about it. They have different pricing models everywhere. Again, you have the $5 for free, use it up. They'll tell you actually in here, if you go to your billing um, and then usage limits or no, it's, let's see, it's, I think it's just usage here. So it'll actually show you what you're using. So I have a $10 limit. I've used $0 so far this month. 
um, but it shows you all the model usage down here. And so it is, it is cheap, like I said. Um, so again, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, let's see, I've used three, not even a cent. <laughs> so I've used not even a cent so far. So again, it takes a long time to actually accumulate, you know, a dollar even. So go ahead and, uh, you know, don't go crazy with it, but be smart about it and set your, set your hard limits for sure. So I don't want to use more than $10 this month. So I'm going to make sure that I don't. All right. So going back, let's get out of this pricing page. Let's go back to the code. So the temperature is basically an order of randomness. Now, if you set zero, if you set the temperature to zero, that's basically a deterministic answer. So every time you make the same, every time you have the same body dot prompt here, so the same input text, it'll with a temperature of zero, it'll basically return a deterministic answer, meaning that it'll be more or less the same every single time. If you introduce an order of randomness between zero and one, um, it will actually be a non-deterministic model, meaning that um, it'll actually create a new response every single time, or it'll be some sort of random uh, randomness in the response, right? And so uh, you won't see the same response twice. And I think around 0.6 is basically considered like a good order of randomness according to OpenAI uh, and ChatGPT, you know, developers in general. So. Um, again, you couldn't go higher, you can go all the way to one. Um, but you know, if you're asking questions like, give me a name for a pet, or like, give me a name for a, you know, a new name for my dog, you want some kind of order of randomness in there. Otherwise, like if it's deterministic, it'll be the same answer every time. And you're not going to actually get a new answer if you don't like it, for instance. Um, so again, I would put some temperature in there or do the, you know, P top or whatever the other option was. Uh, and then also you want to set your max tokens as well. So there is a default value for max tokens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set it to a thousand, uh, just because a thousand is kind of more or less like their, you know, lower limit for what they charge. Um, and it's, it doesn't like, if you pass in a thousand, it doesn't charge you for a thousand because you know, you're, you're saying max tokens is a thousand, like it doesn't charge you the max, it charges you for what you use, which actually includes the input prompt as well as the output prompt. So as well as the response, but if you keep this to like 10, your response is just going to be essentially 10 characters, right? So more or less, it, it's sometimes it's not quite a token isn't one character, but it'll be a few words, right? So max tokens of 10 only really gives you a few words in a response and it'll just cut it off. So you won't actually get the whole response, which more or less like isn't what you want, but there is an actual API property that does tell you whether or not it's finished or whether or not the, like, the completion was based off of the length, right? So once we get this, we're actually going to just return the JSON and we're going to return completion.data, um, which is you know the data, the response data of this call. So. If we catch something, um, you know, we could log it or we could just, you know, basically uh, do kind of the same thing where we're just gonna return an error. And, um, you know, we can go ahead and kind of do the same thing where we're just gonna pass in this. And, you know, instead we'll just say probably 500 error. And we could say, um, you know, E, we'll say E, uh, you know, it'll probably still pass in dot data. So let's just say E as any for now, um, dot data. So that'll be the message. Um, and this is just satisfied TypeScript. You could, you know, have an interface here, which is definitely the right way to do it. But for time's sake, I'm just going to pass it in as any, and we're going to pass back the data in the error message. And then because, um, you know, we're writing this API here, we might as well actually just create a quick little error handler. Uh, this is just some extra credit here. Um, but let's go ahead and grab, you know, request response and next. And then we are going to kind of basically copy this error function here. Um, but we are going to put it at the end of this. And then we're going to go ahead and just, uh, let's see, we're going to just kind of res.json an error message here. Um, but we want to actually make sure that uh, we set the status as well, right? So what we can do is we can say res.status and we can say error.status. 
Um, and because this is now, you know, not quite an error, we can just put any for now. Again, you want to have an interface for that. Um, create your own interface, and then so then set that to this, and then you can actually say error.status, and you'll get the typings. But dot JSON, and let's just pass in message, and we'll say error.message. Um, you could also make this error instead. A lot of times you would do something like this, which is probably a good way to do it. Let's just say JSON error is error.message. All right, so now we actually have a error function that's going to be catching all of our API v1. So this is API v1 specific error handler, right? You could have a separate error handler for API v2. Um, but you know, a lot of times people will do something like this where they'll pass in, you know, a version along those lines, but let's not worry about that right now. Um, all right, so going back to here, we now actually are returning our completion data from chat GPT. We have everything we need. Now all we need to do is update the front end. All right, so let's go ahead and we are going to pull up two things. We're gonna need our index at HTML. We are going to change this to be chat GPT. I actually think, is it one word? Whatever, one word, two words, not a big deal. Um, and let's just say, hello, chat GPT. Um, and then we are going to add a text area in here. So let's do, let's put in a form. Why not? Let's put it all in a form. Um, and then in our form, we're going to have a text area and it's going to be, let's see, it has all these things. Let's not worry about any of these. Let's just delete all that. Um, and then underneath it, we're gonna have div and we're going to have a button and our button is going to be type submit and we can just say, you know, submit or send um, or chat, whatever you wanna actually put. Let's just say, let's say send, why not? All right, so now we have our text area, we have our send. Let's go ahead and style it real quickly. So we have our H1 text align. Let's put it in the center. Um, let's not make it green. Let's just let's just do black. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, all right, and then um, what else do we have in here? We have our text area. All right, so let's do our text area. First, let's like let's have our form, and then let's have our text area. Let's have our text area. Let's say width uh, seventy five percent. Oh, that's width. I mean width. There we go. And we'll say, um, you know, display block and margin zero auto. So we'll try and just center that. Um, and then our button. All right, let's go ahead and just say, uh, you know, with 100. Well, let's say, let's do the same thing. Let's say with 75%. Um, let's make it the exact same size as the text. So let's do everything the same here. Display block, margin zero, auto. Um, actually, what you could do is you could just, uh, you know, set everything in the form. Oh, the form, we don't want the text area to be a line left. All right, we'll just do that. You could just set, like, you could put the, the actual div in here. So you could say form div, you know, text align center. And then we don't have to do this. It'll actually just display the button in the center. Uh, and then that should work well. It should be the same width as the text area. And then let's see, you could, um, we could have also set the form to be the width display block. So um, actually let's just do that. You could, you could have left it the way I had it. It would have been the same, but I like having the actual button and width. I like having them be the same. So the text area we actually want to have also with 100% in here as well. So now the form is containing the text area and the button, which is what we want. Um, and then we no longer actually need to do this, right? So now we just have text area and button both with width 100%. Uh, and then you probably need to make this display block as well. So let's just say display block with 100% display block with 100%. All right, so I like this a little bit more. Now we have our form, it's width is 75%. It's underneath the H1, we'll put margin in here. We'll say margin, uh, margin top, let's just say uh, 1M. And then the button will also give it a little margin. Margin top, 1M there. All right, and then what we're gonna actually have is underneath our form, 
we're gonna have our div and it's going to be, let's give it an ID, why not? Uh, it'll be our responses, right? So inside of our responses, we're actually going to be, uh, you know, putting what's both set on our end and then what is returned from ChatGPT, right? So responses wise, we're gonna have, um, let's just say margin top, let's say two M's. And then uh, we want to actually say position relative and um, let's give it the same width as the form itself. So um, let's see, instead of width 75%, I'm, I know I'm, no, I'm kind of like a little indecisive today. What I wanna do is I actually wanna set this width to be 50 M's and then I wanna set a max width. So max width is going to be, uh, you know, 90%, let's just say, right? So we have a little bit of padding on the side. Um, we could also just give it padding, which is probably the smarter thing to do. So we can say we want left and right padding of 1.5 M's. And we'll say max width 100% now since we have padding. All right, and so now we have our max width. We have a set width of 50 M's and then it'll be centered based off of this margin zero auto. Um, I actually realize we have margin one EM. We have margin and then margin top, so let's remove that. Now we have margin 1EM, auto zero, right? So that's margin 1EM on the top, auto on the left and right, zero on the bottom. All right, so we have our responses. And then what we wanna do is we wanna create two classes as well that we can put in here. So class one will be, let's just call it .me. And we want all of our responses to be on the right side, whereas we want all the responses of the the other thing would be on the left side, let's just say. Um, so let's just say, uh, I mean, you don't have to, we could actually just make it like a, like a stream. Let's just do it like a stream. That sounds a little bit better. But we do wanna say, maybe have a class called response and we'll say padding. Um, we want it to be, uh, so we don't need relative anymore. I know I'm doing this on the fly guys, I apologize. Um, let's do padding. Uh, 1 EM on the top and bottom, and we'll put zero on the left and the right. And so responses is going to, we want it to be kind of aligned with the form as well. So let's do the same thing here, where responses in and of itself, you could have a, a div completely containing all of this, again, which would be the smarter thing to do. But if you wanted it to be a different size, some people might, um, you can copy this over and you could change this as well. So sometimes you might want the uh, the actual like text area input to be smaller than the response width. Um, we're gonna leave it to be about the same in this case, which means we could have had a parent div containing everything, you know, and then the form would just be with 100% inside of that parent div. Uh, but again, um, we're going to keep it like this for now. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of padding in the response, right? So we're going to just kind of prepend like chat GPT and me for the responses. But what you could do is you could actually have two different classes here. And you could have one that kind of treats it more like a text message response where you have it, you know, the response is popping up on different sides of the screen. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. We're gonna treat it more kind of like an old school terminal log. Uh, so we're just gonna have one class response and then we can actually jump into our JavaScript now, which will be nice. So if we jump into our JavaScript, we can remove this console.log and we're going to grab the form, which is this document I query selector form. Um, we want to grab the text area All right, we only have one form and one text area so we can just kind of grab them by element and then we also have our button and we have our response but we don't need anything with a button because we're gonna actually use the form and it's going to be on submit um, and then we're also going to grab our responses so we can have Const responses, responses, a little Spanish. Const responses equals document dot get element by ID. And that's going to be responses. All right. So we have our responses. We have our text here. We have our form. So we can say, you know, form dot add event listener submit. Oh, this 
IntelliSense with the, uh, you know, when you actually have everything zoomed in, it does some crazy things. Um, all right, so we're gonna have our EV. Now we wanna do ev.prevent default first and foremost. Then we can check if, you know, not text area or not text area dot value. Then let's just do an alert for now. I hate alerts, but you know what? We're just gonna use them. Uh, alert uh, prompt needed, you know, to continue on. You could even do a prompt actually, um, <laughs> uh, but no big deal. Um, we're gonna use what's in the text area. And then uh, we learn obviously we just re return after this, so let's return. And otherwise, we're actually going to make this async function because we're going to do our little try catch block here. All right, and first and foremost, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add uh, our prompt to the screen first. So let's just say uh, function, we're gonna say add me. And you know we'll take in some text as a string, and so and then we'll have function add GPT. Let's just put text string. Um, and realistically, it's going to be the same thing. So we can just say function add text text prefix. All right, and then in here we'll say const l equals document dot create element div. Um, we'll say l dot class name equals response. And finally, we're going to append it to responses. Um, and so l dot text content equals, it's going to be prefix colon text and finally responses dot append child l all right so that should be good it should respond it should actually add it in there and then add me is literally just going to call add text and it's going to pass in text and we'll say me um, and then the other one is going to be the same but it'll be add text chat GPT. All right, so that should be pretty good. On submit and try catch, we are going to, well, first we're going to add text and it's going to be uh, the actual text area dot value, whoop, text area. And the prefix, oh, not add text, we're going to add me, sorry. There we go. So add me and then try it. We're going to await and we're going to call fetch. And the request URL is going to be slash API slash V1 slash AI. And it's going to be the method is post. Uh, the body is going to be json.stringify. And it's going to be prompt, which is going to be text area dot value. And finally, we actually need to specify our headers as well, which is just the content type. So headers, and in here it's content type. And our content type is going to be application JSON. And then that's just you know telling our body parser, letting it know that we are actually sending up JSON content so it knows to parse you know, our body and make sure that we get this prompt value as well. Otherwise we'll get an empty object. So you gotta make sure you pass in the headers with when you're using fetch and we have to set this to something. So let's just say, you know, const res equals, and then we can say that, um, you know, our JSON response equals, or you could say data. I like, I prefer data equals um, await res.json. And then we can actually check the uh, res.status as well. So if res.status, you know, does not equal 200, um, like if it's that 400 response or something like that, then we can just throw a new error 
and we can say uh, data dot error here, right? Which um, you know is what we labeled it the property in there. You could label this whatever you want as long as it matches what's on the server. And then let's go ahead and we're just going to console.log um, data as well, just so that we can actually see what else is in there. But basically what's going to be returned is an object uh, that has choices. And then our choices are going to have text as well as a bunch of other data. And so basically what we want to do is we want to um, add chat, add GPT. And it's going to be data dot choices. Um, and we're gonna have to check double check this. But let's just say choices zero, it's an array of choices, we're only bringing back one response, right? Um, dot text. All right, and then catch, uh, we can just alert in here. So let's just alert um, error. And we'll say, uh, you know, e as error dot message. Um, let's see, so we're going to look at this console log, we're going to check out exactly what's returned here. So we can actually see what was going on. Um, but I believe after we add me, we also want to set the text area to value equals. So we're just going to kind of set it to empty string just so that it kind of renews it or, or renews it, you know, refreshes it makes it look like it's brand new accepting new input. Uh, but this looks decent. You know, it's not perfect, but it should do the job. So let's go ahead, we're gonna run this real quick. Um, see if we get any errors, we may, have to, may have to fix a few things. All right, so we're listening on port 3000. Let's go ahead, open up localhost. Wowzers, something's going on here. All right, let's fix whatever's going on here, let's see. Uh, So the form has padding, but it's not, you know, it's a box sizing issue. So we go back here, um, we gave it padding, but we forgot to put box sizing. Border box, uh, if you don't know what box sizing is, you know, definitely let us, let us know and we'll make a whole video about it. Basically, it, it sets whether or not the width is factored into, um, or the padding is factored into the width. So with 1.5 M's in there, we want to make sure that this 50 M's is, or actually it's really max width also. So it's bigger than the screen because with padding plus width, uh, you know, it's going to be too big. So 50 M's might be too big currently. We may want to actually decrease that because um, we don't want it to be actually bigger than the size of the screen. Um, but let's see, now our button isn't quite the whole width either. So let's see. Our form, oh, it's our text area is the issue. So our text area, we actually need that to be uh, box sizing as well. So box sizing, border box. Um, and let's just put on the button as well. Honestly, you can make it everything that way. Um, you know, box sizing, border box. You could just do star. A lot of times applications will do this. Box sizing, border box. And then you don't need any of this. I mean, if we're going to put on everything, then, you know, why bother? Um, but now everything has box sizing border box. All right. So let's go ahead and pop this back up. All right. Um, and refresh the screen. All right. Now we can see that we actually have everything in here. And this width, let's make this height a little bit too, just so that it looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and we'll say text area. Height, let's say uh, 10 M's. All right, so now we have a nice little chat GPT window here. Um, and then we're going to end up actually getting it, you know, some responses down here. So let's say hello chat GPT, let's say, what is the meaning of life? And we're gonna go ahead and send that me. What is the meaning of life? Chat GPT undefined. So let's go ahead and actually look and see what happened here. So. Do we get, we got invalid route. All right, so let's check our network tab real quick. All right, so we made a mistake somewhere. Let's see, AI, wow, this window. The zoomed in is not my favorite, not gonna lie. Um, but let's see, headers, request URL, I can't see anything. All right, let's make this screen a little bit bigger. 
API B1 AI. All right, so that looks good. Oh, you know what? We didn't actually add. We got to come back in here. We got to add our our uh, actual route here. So um, we never actually added. We added the uh, the actual error handler in here, right? But we have users, we don't have AI. So we need to actually come in here and we need to import AI from slash AI. And just like the users, we're going to dot use slash AI with the AI function, right? All right, so now we're gonna be jumping in here. So now it's not gonna be an invalid route. Um, which is basically the error handle that we have returned here. So it got into API v1, but then we knew that we messed up because we hit this error here, right? So res.json invalid route. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to refresh the screen now and fix this. So let's go ahead and refresh. What is the meaning of life? And send prompt needed to continue. All right. So let's see. We sent the payload with an empty prompt. That's because we set text value to, to empty string. This is just bad coding people. We came in here, we set text value to empty before we actually sent it out, right? So this is the problem. So we actually need a little variable in here. Um, let's go ahead and we'll say const prompt equals, well, let's do it down here. We'll say const prompt equals text area dot value, right? Because if not text area, then we'd actually get an error here. You could also do this right above here. Um, so that's another option if we wanted to do const prompt equals text area dot value. And then we can just say here actually, if not prompt, then we'll get this error. Uh, so then we want to actually set that here and then we're gonna pass in prompt right there. So that'll fix that issue. That was just garbage coding. Apologies, guys. I was doing things too quickly and I'm a little camera shy. So let's go ahead and pop this back open. And one of these days, we're going to find out what the meaning of life is. So chat GPT, tell us what is the meaning of life? And it says the meaning of life is a personal and subjective concept and can be interpreted differently by each individual. Ultimately, it is up to each person to decide their own purpose and meaning of life. Wow, that is deep. Thank you, ChatGPT. Uh, now, if we look at the actual response here, what you can see is that it tells you your usage. So that used 47 total tokens. Now, we set our max to 1,000. So we didn't even come close to our total or max. Um, and we're going to have to use, we're going to have to do a lot of these to actually get, you know, any type of dollar amount in here. But you know, basically in here, you can see this response and the finish reason here is stop, right? Now, if we ask them a really long question that was bigger than a thousand, and let's just do that real quick. Let's just pull this up. We're gonna change our AI.TS instead of max tokens. Let's say five is gonna be our max tokens. And if we actually say, what is the meaning of life again? All right, so we get the meaning of Right, so it only sent us three words back because that's five tokens. Uh, I don't know what the tokens come out to. It's clearly a byte amount. Um, I think it is at least, but regardless, this is all we got, the meaning of, um, and if we come into the actual response here and we look at choices, we look at choice zero, it says finish reason is length. So if you remember last time the finish reason was stop, and this is really what we wanna see. So when you're actually writing your app, you can actually look at this finish reason. You can know whether or not maybe I need to, you know, make the request again with a larger max token amount, and we'll know um, whether or not, you know, or you can just error and say, you know, the response is too long or something like that. But whatever it is you're doing for your specific application is going to be what you need to do. Um, but at least you actually have data around, you know, what that actually is and what that's doing. So. Again, max tokens, we set it to a thousand. You can make it bigger if you want. Um, but I believe the max is like 2048. Uh, it might be larger now. I know they're increasing it all the time. Um, but let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of this console.log. You also have an ID here, which is nice as well. 
Um, so, you know, you can store that response. But let's go ahead and pull up our app.ts. We're going to remove this console.log just for, you know, cleaning up purposes. And yeah, so again, um, you can now, you know, you can, ch if you wanted to, you could change this too. This is a pretty big, uh, you know, pretty big, uh, let's see, um, you know, padding in here. So because things are zoomed in, everything's a lot bigger on my screen than it would be on yours. Um, so I would say just recommend, uh, you know, doing whatever you think looks good. Let's say, uh, let's go in there and go to style.cs and just kind of change everything up a little bit. So we'll keep the padding up there the same, but let's say uh, responses, let's just do 1M there and um, padding in here, let's do 0 0.25 M's. Um, and then that'll just be a total of 0.5 in between. So again, our conversation is deleted every time. Um, you can just say, uh, how big is the tallest building? All right, and then you could put a little loader in there as well, but the tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. So that's something I didn't know. It stands at 2,722 feet tall, so 830 meters, that's huge. Um, again, you know, we can continue to chat in here. Uh, is, what is the world's favorite or world's most used name? All right, so it's loading. Um, is Muhammad? It is estimated that over 150 million people in the world are named Muhammad. So again, whatever you need to know, it'll tell you. Um, and then we could also actually prepend these answers as well. So instead of appending it this way, we could prepend them so that the actual latest thing is the top here. Which again, I actually tend to like that a little bit more. But some people like it chronologically. Um, so. Again, uh, if you wanted to do that, what we could do real quick um, is going to be just come in here, go to app.ts, and instead of a pen child here, you're going to do insert before, and it's going to be responses.firstchild. All right, so now if we actually load this, and we say, um, what, what is the best pet? All right, what is the best pet? And then it says, chat GPT, this is a matter of personal preference. Some people prefer cats, while others may prefer dogs, fish, birds, reptiles, or other animals. Uh, so yeah, whatever your best pet is, let chat GPT tell you. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I probably hurt some of your feelings with some of that CSS. But again, I was trying to, trying to go quick and not overly complicate it. And I think I probably did end up doing that by accident. But if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. We always go through, we answer everything that's asked. If you have any further ideas as far as playing with some more AIs, let us know. We'll be happy to make a video. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe. Check out our merch store in the comments below. And also, have some fun with this. See you guys soon.